Matthew 27. And I want to read one verse, verse number five. St. Matthew 27, verse five. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. We continue the year theme, the overall theme of kingdom authority. We are on the series, Kingdom Conviction. And today, I want to minister from the sermon topic, self-convicted. Self-convicted. Let's begin. Words are important as we go about our day. Sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say what you say. Words spoken first thing in the morning can shape the whole day. Not only are words important in the formation of each day, but words are important in the formation of your tomorrow and your eternity. Of words, the following has been said. All words are pegs to hang ideas on. Henry Ward Beecher. A word is dead when it is said, some say. I say it just begins to live that day. Emily Dickinson. Words make another place, a place to escape to with your spirit alone. Robert McNeil. Then, of course, there are the sayings from the Holy Writ, the Word of God. Thy word, Lord have mercy, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, 105. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119, 11. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Psalm 119, 133. Today in this introduction, I want to communicate words, of the differences between conviction and condemnation. Words are important. Uh, very often I find that there are those who use these two words interchangeably. Not so. Conviction, the act or process of finding a person guilty of a crime, especially in a court of law. Condemnation, the action of condemning someone to punishment, sentencing. They are not the same. You can be convicted of something but not have to be condemned or suffer the consequences. Yes. Church, this is why you must desire to be self-convicted so that you can self-correct before the consequences unfold. Yes. Hope you're getting that. That is, allow conviction of self to stop or block the effect of condemnation. Yes. Uh -huh. Conviction says, I am guilty. Condemnation says that I am guilty and now I will suffer for it. I need you to get that today. Conviction says I'm guilty. Condemnation takes it a step further that not only are you guilty, but now you're going to suffer for it. You got to get the difference. It is my firm belief that as long as a person can breathe, they have breath, they have an opportunity to avoid condemnation. Listen to these verses, Luke 23 and 40. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? That's on the cross. Condemnation. John 3, 19. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and man loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Hmm. John 5, 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that hath sent me hath everlasting life 
and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Romans 5 and 18, therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Romans 8 and 1 says this, there is therefore now no condemnation, God, God Almighty, to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Oh, Lord. Church, to avoid condemnation, embrace conviction by God's Holy Spirit. Seek forgiveness from God and move on to live a life free of external conviction and free of condemnation. The issues we will look at with Judas is that he missed the meaning of these two words. He missed it. Let's look at how Judas missed it as we deal with the following three points. Number one, point number one, self Assessment, self-assessment. Point number two, church, self-centered. Self-centered. <laughs> and then point number three, self-condemned. Self-condemned. Let's deal with the point number one, self-assessment. You know what, church? When we all stand before God, we will be without excuse. God will have given you enough time to check yourself or self-assess. Rather than taking pictures of everybody else, take a selfie and check out yourself. So easy to check out everybody else. I can see mother and father Russell, but I'm going to flip it around and because guess who? It's you, <laughs> Maria <laughs> Seaman, <laughs> who's going to have to stand to God, stand right in front of God one day, and there'll be nobody else in the picture. And so therefore, I definitely need to be working out my salvation. I need to be listening to the Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to check me, convict me, so that I can make heaven my home. Hmm. That, that, that cell phone moment, it's like the mirror exercise. Remember the mirror exercise that before I dare check out anyone else, I take a look at myself to be sure that I have the right to check them. That's what the Bible's saying when it says judge not. It's saying you have no right to judge anybody if you're guilty. But let me tell you right now, I will stand here to make sure as much as humanly possible that you stand at the judgment seat clean before God by giving you good practice right here. That if I see you going astray to the left or to the right, that as a pastor, a responsible shepherd, I speak to that moment. I speak to that moment. God will always give you an opportunity to self-check or to self-assess. Achan had an opportunity. David had his opportunity. Ananias and Sapphira were right up in the house of God. They had their opportunity. So even attending church ain't going to save you. We all have the opportunity. Judas now, our focus for today, has that same opportunity to self-assess. Oh, God. Now, before this time, Judas could have been self-convicted. Before this time. Oh, I don't want you to miss it. I may teach more than preach today. But I'm going to say it because I want to make it clear because the enemy is out to present a different picture. I'm going to tell you that before he hung himself, God gave him an opportunity to be convicted. Oh, I'm going to help somebody today. God's word is so clear. Matthew 26, I want to talk about the opportunity he had. Matthew 26, 21 through 25. Listen, church. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, 
He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The son of man goeth as it is written of him. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Let me, let me pause here to say, Jesus had to get to the cross. It's going to happen. The scripture says, but woe. That's a wait. Woe unto the man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. Oh, come on. He said, You got it. He said, Mm hmm. You said that right. Study, and I just looked at it in a bit here. Study says that Judas was sitting close enough to Jesus so that Judas would have heard Jesus say that it was him. If only Judas would have self-assessed, he would have self-corrected. Yet it is important to understand that when Satan fills your heart, you will be deceived, watch this, by your own self into thinking that you are okay when you are clearly not okay. Point number two, self-centered. This is heavy. Self-centered, church. Follow me, Sister De Silva. This was so delicious here. Self-centered. Verses one through four. Self-centered. I'm going to say it again. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, listen to them. What is that to us? See thou to that. In other words, our business is taken care of. Take care of your own business. Watch out now. Look, can, can a preacher say this on a Sunday? That even in the house of God, you've got some leaders, huh? That can use you and throw you away. Is that okay? Lord have mercy. So look, 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 take a look at this. Take a look at this. Talking about in the house, in leadership, right? You got chief priests, elders, and Pontius Pilate. And I want you to hear me here. With this statement, God knows you because he is God. Listen to this. Satan knows you because he studies you. God knows you. Satan studies you to know you. He knew how you fell before. He knew what you needed for attention before. So he had to let you have your way in the church, get all happy. But then when you move out of the church and the anointing is not hovering like it has today, he then sets it before you because he studied you. So somebody in here needs to make, see, let me, let me make it plain. Judas hung himself literally. You can hang yourself and still be alive. You can destroy your own purpose and destiny in the house of God because you come in the house of God, but you're not adhering to the words of God. Look at who Judas went to, chief priest, head of the church, elders, head of the people, Pontius Pilate, head of government. Listen, in studying Judas, the devil knew <laughs> that Judas had a propensity to allow money to dictate what he would say and what he would do. Judas would make his next move based on money. Money. Show me the money. How much I'm going to make. Oh, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help your church. This is self-centeredness at its peak for as a disciple of Jesus by now he should have understood that his chiefest aim was to serve humanity when you understand that everything you have anything you are 
is to the purpose of the kingdom, then you realize that every gift and everything that you have, you're able to surrender to the purpose of the kingdom. But when you think that's mine, it's about me, you are not going to be kingdom minded. I promise you, if every time I went online and I paid what I paid, if I thought about me, I'd say, no, I'm still got a big mortgage. Church ain't paying for my house. I've still got a car 16 years. I need to hold on. Church ain't paying for my car. But when I think about the goodness of Jesus, I think about what he's doing in the house. I said, what? This is good ground. This is good sowing ground. I can see it in this house because we're going to be a kingdom-minded church that the enemy can look at us and all he's going to know is that we are a people determined to serve God with everything that we have. That means, and listen, in being a servant, a true servant of God, you cannot be self-centered. Let me help somebody. We're coming down. This is the last Sunday of the church here, in it? All right, so let me help out leaders. When you are a servant, even when the people hurt your feelings and all that, you just kind of do, you don't even do this. You do an inward shake. I can't show you that because it's inside. You do an inward shake and say, God, I'm going to serve you anyway, God. This is just a little bump in the road. This is just a little bit of swaying to the left or right. But God, I made up my mind that what you called me to do, I'm going to do it with all due diligence. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be, I said, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to smile. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to cheer for Jesus. I'm going to jump for joy because the Lord is my strength. See, church, here, catch this, church, catch this. Because if you don't remain focused on I'm serving the kingdom, you'll get trapped in what they did to you, how they made you feel. And I'm here to tell you that's where Judas went wrong. Oh, I can't rush ahead of myself. I can't rush ahead of myself here. Judas was so caught up in the money that he did not realize that he was now caught out of something worth much more. The divine will of God. Oh, I didn't even know how serious people could say this. They could offer me a million dollars, cold cash. You just got to stop preaching what you preach. You have to stop being so active on social issues. You have to keep it inside the full Are you kidding me? What would it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his home? Oh, my God. Hear this. Judas, this is, this, I've got this highlighted for myself. Judas wanted to betray Jesus for money, not betray Jesus to death. I told you they have been studying Judas. They knew the man like money. They didn't come to him saying, hey, we want to we wanna take out Jesus. We want to make sure he's out. We, we, we're tired of what he does. We want him dead. They didn't come to him like that. We say, hey, listen, we know you hang with him, right? We, we just know uh, in the quiet of the night, we want to do this thing kind of under the radar, and we want to just, can, can you kind of give us a clue of where he is? And listen, you ain't got to say nothing. Just go and greet him. Give him a kiss. I'm here to tell you, I'm going to say it again, because I'm going to prove it by the word of God. Judas wanted to betray Jesus for money, not betray Jesus to death. All right, let's go. Yet he now sees the heads of the church, the heads of the people, and the head of the government all take counsel to kill Jesus. Mm -hmm. He did not know that his betrayal would lead to death until this moment. When Judas, when Judas saw Jesus bound up like a lamb before slaughter, that's when he understood how self-centered he had been. When he saw Jesus tied up like an animal, he said, this is not what I bargained for. I was just going to show them who Jesus was. But now I said, look what they've done. Okay, Holy Ghost, I hear you. 
God just said in my ear, he said, Maria, they're doing the same thing today. You've got some churches not lifting up who the word is, Jesus is. You've got some elders controlling churches. Huh? you got government people want, to be, want the church to be quiet. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going to keep on speaking about Jesus. He's done so much for me. Gave his life for me. I'm taking this thing personal, what he did for me. So Judas now sees something he didn't see before. He never saw it before. All he saw was the money. Watch it now. Oh, Lord. Some people think, oh, I'll never betray Jesus for money. Can I tell you a couple of examples of how, or at least one, how we betray Jesus for money? Pastor, I've got this new taxi. And I know God has told me to have this taxi. All right, all right. Can't say nothing. You don't see him in church no more. I got to make my money. You think Jesus gave you a vehicle to stay out of fellowship? Lion wonder. <laughs> Another one, something like this. I need a better job. And pastor, if I get this, I can come church. I see some people working at the battle. You think God gives you a job so that you're never, I'm not talking about, I ain't talking about people that work officially. I know what I'm talking about. I'm people talking about people, let me help somebody out. Don't get, don't get self-convicted unnecessarily. I'm talking about people, I ain't seen them in a year. All right? Remember the elder seaman has to work once in a while. What the waterworks, Dr. What the waterworks. Okay. And so Judas here, he sees Jesus bound. <laughs> Let's look at the word bound. Bound comes from the Greek word deo, to bind, fasten with chains, to throw into chains. Judas sees Jesus, Lord have mercy, being tied up and treated like an animal. <laughs> Judas saw Jesus condemned. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the word condemned. Comes from the word katakrino. Katakrino. It means to give judgment against, to judge worthy of punishment. This is when self-conviction set in. Not when he betrayed Jesus. When he kissed him, he weren't, he weren't sorrowful. So not when he betrayed Jesus, but when he realized, watch this, that his betrayal was the trigger on the gun that would send Jesus to the cross of Calvary. Mm -hmm. Now he repented. But he already had the 30 pieces of silver. Yes. Huh? Yes. He already had the payment. Yes. And they already had, the, had Jesus. Yes. So what you going to do? Yes. You think that you can just, oh, just change your mind. Yes. Bargaining with the devil. Yes. Devil in the church. 30 pieces of silver. Yes. Just huh, take it back. I don't want it no more. Have, I'll have no part of it. Too late. You already did it. Right. Too late. Too late. Sealed it. Why you had to be used? <laughs> well, speaking of 30 pieces of silver, Judas should have known from history and tradition the knowledge that 30 pieces of silver in his culture represented the cost of a worthless slave. It's not a lot of money, and yet it would be a high price for Judas as he realized he cheaply, Lord have mercy, cheaply sold out his master to death. Lord have mercy. That's why, listen, when I see what, listen, let me try to, listen, Linda, let me try to help somebody here. When I, re, this is so right, when I realized what Jesus went through, you think when an earthly friend betrays me, I go and be depressed and all that. What? Did you see what the young people said for depression, for rejection, for whatever? The cross took care of that. Looking unto Jesus. I looking up unto you, and you better not be looking unto me. It is somebody say Jesus. Oh, somebody say Jesus. Call his name again. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He started it. And he'll complete it. He 
began this and he will end it. It's Jesus that you trust. It's Jesus who you serve. It's Jesus who you worship. His name is Jesus. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of money. This is why when he became aware of the death of his deeds, he tried to turn back the hands of time. Oh, people, you can't turn back. Look, look. What you did is done. Come on now, somebody knows that. You can't go back and undo it. Just move forward. Somebody say move forward. Move forward. You can't change it. It's already recorded. But now you can move forward with a new script. Turn the page. The page only now being scripted by the blood of Jesus. That God, everything I do will be to uplift the name of Jesus. You know, you know. He wanted to reverse the deed. I'm going to read 3 through 5 again. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, see it right there, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I betrayed the innocent blood. He knew he was innocent. huh? And they said, well, what is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. I said this is about being self-centered. And trust you me, I'm sure of this. The issue remains here that Judas is yet self-centered. He just saw Jesus bound up. You would have thought that would have removed his self-centeredness and that it really became all about Jesus. No, it didn't. Even right there, let me help you out. For he sees Jesus in such a state and seeks not to get Jesus to forgive him. Hmm? But to get to the church leaders. Hello. You don't have to ask me to forgive you. You better go to God. And then after that, your life will speak for you. He goes back to church leaders for them to take back the betrayal fee. I didn't mean it. Take that back now, really? <laughs> he cast down the money, yet the spirit, oh Lord have mercy. He cast down the money, yet the spirit of the money, or the spirit within himself, had already yielded the results that he is now witnessing. The enemy just wants to get you started on a path. Just, just get you hooked. It's like how marijuana is a gateway drug. And here we are about to decriminalize it. That smelly, stinking, thieving thing called marijuana. Gateway drug. He just wants to just get you off track a bit and lead you right in. So it was the spirit that was within him that's now yielding what he is witnessing, and Jesus will be put to death. Sadly, Judas simply saw an opportunity, that was it, to get money. This was just about getting money. I'm telling you, if you live unto money, money's your God. Money ain't going to be my God. I'm going to have plenty of it. One day I may even be a millionaire. Um, help me out with this, young people. Somebody, help your pastor. You know my contacts, see one way, one way, and go. All right. Is that it? Oh, thank you. See how? Thank you. So, Judas, this is Judas. All he saw was money. Yes. Money, money, money. money. Mm -hmm. All of you know that team, just like your pastor. <laughs> this is all he saw. Straightforward, money. So blinded, he did not understand the true depth of what he was about to experience. All he saw was money. And it wasn't even a lot of money. Straightforward, he had not considered the consequences. After all, he was probably, well, this right here. And God shared me this, I got happy all by myself. After all, Judas, he was probably still steaming, steaming mad from what 
he considered was a move that was a waste of money. Oh, come on. Oh, Lord, I hope. Remember that? We're in Matthew 27. He's still steaming from Matthew 26. Let me read it. <laughs> Matthew 26, 7 through 9. Listen, listen, listen. Look, this is Judas. There came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head and he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. To what purpose is this waste? For the ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Now you have to understand the lead disciple concerning money would have been Judas. Waste of money, just drink. Oh, that money. So his, his, he's now being taken in. I'm being led by money. I'm being led by the spirit of God. It's the spirit of the money. All right. Judas, irritated, left this moment, and five verses later, yes. Matthew 26, 14 through 15, then one of the disciples called Judas Iscariot went unto the chief priests and said unto them, What will, what? What will you get? That Jesus just thrim, just taking stuff along, people to waste money, could have been used for something. Anyway, you guys, what will you give me? And I will deliver him. He ain't enough of money. He ain't know how to run a business. He and I will deliver him unto you. And they covenanted. Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They covenanted with him for 30 pieces of silver. Pure self-centeredness. Judas had no idea that the fight he really was going to have would not be about money, but about his very own self-centered heart. Money is not the problem. Ain't nothing wrong with money. Anybody want to give me money right now? Nothing wrong with money. I need more. I'd like some more. Donate all you have. Yes, I said it. Nothing wrong with money. God's going to examine uh, here we go again. The internal workings of your motives concerning the money. Ain't nothing wrong with money. But, but, but when you see somewhere in here, he loved money more than Jesus. He loved money and prestige more than being a servant. That's where the trouble is. Judah's heart was deceitful and desperately wicked. He didn't even know it. So wicked that his, watch this, his very own heart refused to be true to himself. Can't even be true to himself. Sometimes I read things, I'm like, you can't see that you're wrong. But I know the word, so I just go, come on, Maria, this is one of those moments. They have been fooled by their own heart. And when people are convinced of anything in the heart, that, it's not the, <laughs> Cameras tight on the pastor right now, tight on the pastor. How many of you said, I love him, or I love her? He's the one, she's the one. Come on, sneak those hands up. Come on in the house of God. Yeah, we got some honest people, yeah. Nobody could tell you nothing, right? Your mama couldn't tell you nothing. Grandmammy, grandpappy, nobody. Said, he's not the one. I have this feeling. Who are his people? What's his last name? Where he come from? All that. He ain't the one. Look at him. These days, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. See, because here's the thing. When your heart believes something, I'm hands off, like go right ahead, leave it all you want. Yep. Ain't no sense me getting, having a heart attack. <laughs> Trying to convince you right. when you're already convinced. Right. Leave it alone and let the consequences pan out. Right. It's not nice, but the consequences. Oh, I could teach you on something right there, but I'm gonna leave it alone. Ah. Church, why are you laughing out? Remember when he was the one? That's what you remember? Huh? That island guy? That, yes, you remember? You were taken right away with him, right? Mm-hmm. Smitten. Smitten. That's what he does. That's why he's head over heels. You're all upside down. Oh, oh discombobulated. Huh? 
I tell you, I tell you. But I'm telling you, this is how strong your heart is. You can stand in front of people with wisdom, knowledge, listen to them, nod your head, say, okay, yeah, walk right out the door, go run right back to what your heart said was right. I'm trying to tell you the desperation of your heart to have its way. And that's why we cannot be carnally minded. We've got to be spiritually minded because the only thing that can tame this wicked, evil, my wicked, evil heart, I got to love God's spirit more. Let me carry on here. So listen, listen. Church, never be so locked on being right that even when wrong happens, you refuse to do right after that. Judas could have repented, I'm telling you. However, his heart condemned him, Lord. His heart now, because it's still about him. You with me, Sister DeSilva? It's all about him. He said, show me where Jesus is in the prison. Let me go and see Jesus and let Jesus know face to face that I'm really sorry and that I can't stop what's going to happen, but I am sorry. No, no, I'm going to say this and I mean it. I don't need any feedback that's negative. I'm going to tell you by the spirit that when somebody hangs themselves, they're selfish. Selfish. Tell me it's of God. It ain't of God. Not of God. Judas, he could have repented. However, his heart can see something's wrong with the heart. Heart issues when people are hang themselves. Heart issues. And now he had no peace. Huh? He condemned the Prince of Peace. And so now he has no peace. Come on now. So this takes us to point number three. I'm doing good. Self-condemned. Self-condemned. <laughs> Judas now, look, you, you, tell me this for you. If you allow people to be people, if they are a Judas in any way, it'll show up in time. You, I, you think I worry about trying to expose people? I'm, I'm too happy being a Christian. Everything will show up. Everything will pan out. Just leave. Just sit there. Don't, don't get yourself in a tizzy. Don't get all twisted like, you know, like a pretzel or something. Just, just hang tight. Hang tight. Judas, self-condemned, now condemned his own self. This is one of my favorite scriptures right here. Psalms 119, 165. Great peace <laughs> have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Lord have mercy. You can cuss me out. My daughter said something the other day on Facebook. She said, my mama has no chill. She said, when people come against her, she just, it's like she puts on the speed, speed you know, put the paddles in the metal. She comes back again, yes I do, yes I do, because I have peace with God. And as I speak what God has called me to speak, uh, your word, your word, I don't care what you call me. I don't care what, I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. That's a Bermuda thing. Um, Shy, if you're listening to this in the UK, you got to make sure one of your words is, I don't care. I don't care. Some of you know what I'm saying. Bermudians know, I don't care. Right? Everybody say, I don't care. That's right. That's right. When the enemy comes in your face, when he tries to tell you you're something and you know you're not that, you got to say, I don't care. I don't care. When, when he comes at you and he tries to take you down a peg or two, tries to cut your legs from out among you, just say, I don't care, I don't care. That's right, because you know, I know who I am. Walking in power. Walking in favor. Living in miracles. I, I know who I am. <laughs> Glory, I felt that. Now, now, on this day, as I said, Judas lost his peace. He betrayed the Prince of Peace and then lost peace. Come on now. Listen, church, the die has been cast. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. Judas, you don't get this preaching much. Listen to this. Jesus is on his way to Calvary now. Judas could have repented and lived. Come on now, come on now. Judas could have repented and lived, yet he is so set on himself that he missed out that Jesus had said that he must die. He told his disciples, I must die, but then I'm going to live again. Yes. He had told them that. Yes. Where there is no self-conviction, there will be no right next move. 
Judas missed something here that is amazing. As Judas threw the money into the temple, listen to verses 6 through 10. You know I'm going to go into 10. 6 through 10. Here we go. Watch. And the chief priest took, <laughs> took the silver. You can't leave the blood money in the church. Okay. All right. Read, Simon. Read. Money laundry. Here we go. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury. No, it's we're holy, so we can't use this money. People will, oh, I'm going to work that right here. People will kill Jesus today, and they'll walk around with a collar, the leader of Bermuda. People will say things that Jesus didn't say, like a man could be of a man, a woman could be of a woman, and then still they're going to be, I ain't listening to none of them, and I ain't praying with them either. They say, crucify Christ afresh. That's what they do. Let me read this here, because I'm doing good. They say, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel. Here they go again, counsel meeting. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out right here. So they brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Some of you are inching there. Wherefore, that field, I missed all my words. I'm in so, I'm upside out. Had, had you make all my frames, and I'm just going back. I'm in into the word. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was the fulfillment that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, and they took 30 pieces of silver, it's Old Testament, the price of him that was valued, that's Jesus, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Israel didn't value Jesus that much. And gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. The priests could not use the blood money under the law. Blood could not touch the law. Blood could not touch the law. What the law did was allow them to purchase something outside the church. Like get a piece of property. Get outside the church a field for the burial of strangers. So these are strangers, get it? Strangers outside of the law. Come on now. Stra stra shamano. The this is a bloody field. This is a bloody field outside of the law for strangers. Okay, okay, okay. The field of blood, it's called the potter's field. I would say it's a parable field, really. Watch. A field where the stranger could come and the potter could put you back to death. Can't get happy yet. Bring it back slow, see. Watch. The field symbolically was filled with the blood money of the deed of Judas, meaning that the field was filled with the blood of Jesus. The only reason that the field was brought was because it was the blood. Oh, no, no more shame. <laughs> Hence, the field was filled with the blood of Jesus. Judas, this is what, da, da, da. Judas could have been the first partaker of this field in allowing Jesus to forgive his sins. Bring it for me now. Come on now. Huh? I need to help somebody. That there's a field, and that field is called the potter's field. That you can be buried there. You can come there dead in trespasses and sins. And if you get to this field, the field filled with the blood of Jesus, the potter can put your back together again. I don't care what you've been in. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how 
you even feel about yourself right now, I'm telling you there is not only a cross, but there is a field that's filled with what is symbolically the blood of Jesus. A stranger, oh, you're a stranger because you're not of the household and you ain't no Jew and you ain't no Israelite. And so you're a stranger to the Lord. But I'm telling you that this field was purchased for the stranger. You don't have to be all right. You don't have to be perfect. All you've got to do is decide that you want to leave your sins behind. All you've got to do is decide that the way that you've been living, you don't want to live that way anymore. That you're ready to give over your life for the potter's field. Judas could have been the first partaker. There's a self-centered fellow. Ain't thinking about nobody else. Can you imagine? Oh, hold up, hold up. Now let's be Judas. Suppose he did. That he went out of the temple. I'm gonna help you somewhere else too. Yeah. Oh, he went out of the temple, gave it a day or so, could let your emotions calm down. Go to the field, because I'm Go to the field that your betrayal purchased. Hmm? Understand that that's right. He did say, he did say he would like a seed fall dead to the ground and rip. So, Jesus, I'm sorry I walked with you, but I really didn't know you. Jesus, I'm sorry that I watched you do miracle after miracle, but still spoke against you. Jesus, I'm so sorry because the things that you taught us were magnificent, yet I betrayed you. If he would have gone to the field, he would have been healed. And we have many people today that are bitter from experiences and don't realize all they need to do is go to the potter's field. Listen here. So we've got Judas. Sadly, because I got one more big thing to show you. A, a big thing is happening. Right. Bigly. Okay. <laughs> Sadly, self convicted Judas went and carried out a death sentence on his own self. You never have the right to carry out a death sentence. How can you carry out a death sentence when Jesus died for you? Because what you're saying is, I'm still self-centered, and I'm more important than Jesus, so rather than accepting the work that Jesus did, I'm going to take a hold of this possession right here. It should have been that, watch this. It should have been that only Jesus, I'm going to show you how, <laughs> I'm going to show you now how the devil likes to imitate Jesus. Right? He's a copycat. Yeah. Fraudster. Oh, yeah. Shyster. Yeah. Watch this, watch this. It should have been, on church, that only Jesus would hang on a tree. Yeah? yeah? yeah. But here the devil torments Judas, who then hangs himself on a tree first. The right consequence, but the wrong person. Yeah. Some people want to now lift up. Suicide? You're looking at Jesus. I'm looking at Jesus. <laughs> Church, we must learn the lesson from Judas. Do not be selfish. Do not self-destruct. Self-discipline. Self-convict you before you convict yourself to death. I'm not good enough. You just self-convicted yourself. I got to get all myself together before, before I come into the church. You just convicted yourself. Allow yourself to be blessed because Jesus died on a tree. Don't go and hang yourself on a tree. <laughs> Allow the potter's field to change your life. Do not take your own life. Do not betray Jesus afresh. Judas could have lived, according to Jeremiah 18, the potter. And the potter would have put him. Can you imagine the testimony he would have had? I was the one that betrayed Jesus. 
Felt like I wasn't even worthy of life. Felt like I had disappointed the whole world. But I went to the potter's field. And after I stood there and recognized now the value that it would represent, I went to Jesus. And I asked Jesus to forgive me. What kind of apostle corner he would have been. And because of that, he never could become an apostle. The enemy wants to take away your witness, take away your ministry, take away that which God has imparted into you for his glory. Don't you, don't you, I'm telling you, I feel this thing right now. Don't you sit on your gift. Don't you sit on what God has given you. It's for his glory, not for mine, not for yours, not for Shekinah. It is for the kingdom. I owe it all to him. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. He's the promise keep. He's the light in darkness. That's who he is. When you refuse to be kingdom convicted, something or someone will die. No, church, instead, look up and live. Remember, conviction is to save you and not to kill you. I ain't trying to kill nobody around here. We want to be convicted so that we are drawn to Jesus. I want to be more like you, Jesus. So, God, anything within me that is unlike you, I give you permission to remove it from me. Only when we do that can we then walk in purpose and destiny. Judas missed it. Don't you ever, young people, don't you miss your calling. Don't you miss your purpose. And listen, my young women, I know we ain't got a whole lot, lot of men in the kingdom. I, hey, that's not your focus. Seek the kingdom first. See what God will do. But let's hold the standard up. Let's hold up the standard of the blood stain. He brought, that field is for you. It's for me. That's what we have to do. I hear this song, love it. Talking about take me back. God, I lost my, I lost my fervor. I lost my passion. I lost my desire. Oh, really? That's the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I tell you what, I know a potter. He'll put you back together again. Don't destroy your own life. I said, Pastor, Pastor, I would never take my own life. I'm talking beyond your natural life. I'm talking about your spiritual life, your purpose. Been in church this many years, still not able to do what you know you should be doing. But we got it today. No more of this suicide nonsense. I don't care what doctors say. I don't care what psychologists say. I don't care what the courts say. That's all these people are bringing you know. Don't you be listening to these people? Read your word. Any one person died on a tree, and it was for a reason. And nobody else is suicide. Somebody else's suicide saved somebody from hell? Oh. Focus. God has given life and life in abundance. All heads bowed, eyes closed at this moment. This story, this account of Judas, again causes us to say, you know what? I need to check myself. I don't want to become self-centered where it becomes about me. Because when it becomes about me, I don't see anybody else, so I can't be a servant. And I, you know what? This is the last Sunday of this church year. I want to, I want to make sure during the church year, 2017 to 2018, I am servant-minded, I'm servant-minded, I'm doing the will of God. I want you to think about that, church. Now, before I get there, get back there, somebody in here needs to recommit their life to Jesus, needs to uh, uh, accept Jesus into their heart. Hey, if you don't know Jesus, his spirit can convict you and bring you into your full purpose for which you were born. So first thing, let's, let's see who needs to accept Jesus, the one who died for us, shed his blood for us, that we would not be lost. Who needs to accept Jesus as Lord and personal Savior?